beyond that level, such as the ones that we see from the finance minister, the picture is actually much more grim, in which we are projected to be grow by less than 1% uh, in the next three years or so. Due to the COVID crisis, central bankers all around the world have been cutting interest rates in a desperate effort to try and stimulate some kind of economic growth. This has happened certainly to an extent in South Africa. And here to discuss the interest rates and central banking is CRA analyst Biggie Mahlobo. Now, Biggie, tell us, uh, in the last MPC meeting, we had the central bank keep interest rates the same. What do you think is likely to happen in the next meeting? So there are two indicators in which the MPC uses to essentially use for an interest rate decision within the country. The first is that of inflation, which is used by looking at the CPI. Currently, the CPI stands at 2.9%. The MPC aims for a region of around 3 to 6% with a favorable figure of 4.5%. And if inflation reaches those levels, we may actually see decision to increase interest rates during the course of this year. Now, that needs to be read against what's currently happening within the South African economy, as if we see growth within the South African economy, then the Saab may take decisions to actually increase interest rates. However, the picture is quite grim when you're looking at economic activity within the country. Uh, this year, we're projected to grow by 3.3%, but this is not actually real economic growth. This is largely due to the low base of 2020, and now with any level of economic growth this year will create a substantial increase in the GDP figure. When looking at figures beyond that level, such as the ones that we see from the finance minister, the picture is actually much more grim, in which we are projected to be grow by less than 1% uh, in the next three years or so. Now, taking that into consideration and when looking at other solid economic data, such as mining production, which has actually increased by 0.8% in March, uh, we see some level of recovery within the economic activity within the country. Now, you need to read that against the massive decline in mining production in April of last year of around 49%. Now, I do believe that in the next MPC meeting, interest rates will be mainly kept the same, mainly due to the financial, the economic position that businesses find themselves today in. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. Prior to the pandemic, South Africa actually had some, relatively speaking, high interest rates, certainly when you compare to central banks in the West and the United States and Europe and East Asia and so on and so forth. Uh, and it was only during the pandemic that they began to cut quite radically for the first time in a while. So in terms of monetary policy, how has the South African Reserve Bank performed uh, compared to other central banks around the world, uh, in your opinion? The South African Reserve Bank has actually been less accommodative when you compare to the United States as well as certain central banks within Europe. And this is actually quite welcomed as the consequences of the quantum of stimulus that we see in the US are actually inflationary. Uh, United States interest rates are actually at zero and as well as with the new stimulus package of $2 trillion being printed, that will cause hyperinflation or, or high inflation within the US economy. That said, the, because of this decision, which the South African bank has chosen not to be as accommodative as other central banks around the world, they have faced criticism within certain ANC members, the ones that follow the ideology that of modern monetary theory. And the theory goes as such that essentially the country can never go bankrupt as well as so long as it prints money in its own currency. And this is actually a dangerous thinking that we see with certain ANC officials as the consequences of a central bank essentially loosening its monetary policy are inflationary, in which that will have consequences of hyperinflation within the country. Indeed, Becky, and with such huge amounts of stimulus within the US, uh, you know, how is it that we haven't seen high inflation up till now? That would depend on how you define inflation. The meaning of inflation has changed over the number of years. It used to mean that inflation was simply the increase in the quantum of money printed by a central bank. Now it essentially means it's that it's an increase in the CPI, the cost of consumer products. Now, there's a lot of errors when calculating the CPI. It does not take into account such things as that of the uh, housing market as well as stock market. And what we've seen with the new quantum of stimulus that's coming from the US is that new money has found its way into Wall Street as well as the housing price. So essentially, to answer your question, we have actually seen inflation within the US, but it's not in the form of consumer high uh, a high increase in consumer prices. It's rather that of an increase in asset prices, in other words, asset inflation. 
We've seen this when looking at US stock markets where yields essentially in US companies have never been so low. Now yields are inversely related to the price of that particular stock, which means that prices have never been so high. That tells us that the stock market in the US has been overvalued. That has major societal uh, repercussions in that it exacerbates the inequality amongst the US population in which the first receivers of that new quantum of stimulus, which is usually Wall Street, get wealthier and wealthier, whereas the average American, the average economy within it, with that economy gets poorer and poorer over time or essentially stagnates over the number of years in the future. Indeed, and that's a very interesting angle from which to look at uh, the current situation of the stimulus in the United States. Uh, Biggie Mashalbo, thank you very much uh, to all the viewers on our CRA channel. If you like our content, please give this video a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow the link in the description for access to the CRA's 30-day free trial. Until next time.